So it's the beginning of March in Utah, which means occasionally we have sunshiny days, everybody is ready for spring, but no actual flowers or grass are gonna be grown. So the only way I can think of to bring spring to the front of my shop is to paint some fun stuff and reorganize it that way people will be drawn in to come shop and maybe it'll make it look a little better. It's going to be 50 at some point this week, but it's also supposed to snow this weekend. So we got to do something, but we don't want to do too much. So if you can't grow flowers, you can paint things in color. All right, this has been outside. It's been exposed to the elements. So I'm just using some degreaser cleaner. Going to give it a good scrub. So to add some color, I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and do a green door in a bunch of different shades of green maybe. And then we will use our JRV stencils and put a magnolia on here, maybe all over, kind of a range of design, and possibly even add a couple of hooks. So that way somebody gets the idea that they could use it like in a hallway or whatever for a hook uh, hanging out situation. In our shop here, we have usually like neutral colors, French country vibe, and I do put a lot of whites and things out front but I like to have fun because it's not an area that has to match the inside and I want it to be bright enough to draw people in. All right, so we decided we're gonna do greens and blues. So this door is going to be blue. Um, we've got Farm Fresh, so it has Skeleton Key, and then we've got Old 57 mixed with White Swan. That's, that's Farm Fresh. This is the Farm Fresh. The Old 57 mixed with the White Swan. And then Bohemian Blue, but I need you to open that because it's dry as shit. These are such fun, rich colors. I got some on my fingers. All right, I'm gonna do this just like the last time. I know purists are gonna be like, I can't believe you're just pouring the paint out. It's all right, you gotta get the coverage. Believe it, I just did it. Oh, I like Farm Fresh with Bohemian Blue. I never thought to put these two together. Yes, yeah, they, they really complement each other. Yeah. We should mention that these doors were free. Uh, we picked them up in a huge haul not too long ago. We got these and some screens. I'm not worried about messing up priceless doors. These were free and we've had them out back and they haven't sold. So this is a great way to add some fun. And you know, if somebody buys them, great. And if not, they'll just look good outside. It definitely draw paint. some attention. Yep. When you go this way again, will you pull that across there? Yeah, I will. Okay. Oh, you got a lot of boho blue on there. Yeah, here. there's a little boho buildup. I need you to like, kind of pull this paint out of that corner and paint Hold that Hold on, I'm feathering. I'm, feather feathering. I'm feathering the blending. And feathering. You know, Debbie just did a video on paint blending. Maybe we should have her watch this one. How Jamie and Zeb do paint blending. <laughs> it's very scientific. It's fast dirty and it looks great when it's done and sanded this is turning out kind of coastal looking maybe and maybe i secretly said blue on purpose to get that look the coastal look we are far from the coast here but we do have a lake we have lots of lakes to pick up the products we're using today be sure to visit jamierayvintage.com so blending is not super easy to do on these doors. They were previously painted with latex. So one of the things that you might notice is as we're dragging our brush across, we are doing it kind of almost parallel with the piece. We're also not pushing super hard. If you push super hard, you're just gonna pull that paint up and make it look really streaky. If you want the best blended finish, it's good to not do it over latex, but sometimes you gotta work with what you got. I'm going to paint Salty Kiss in the middle of my door and then Zeb's gonna layer in some mint chip maybe some apothecary I don't know about aviary because I feel like it'll be fine I'll just it'll be sparing okay and, and some aviary around the edge we'll let it dry give it a good sand and then I'll be ready for a stencil and a good sealer I'm just gonna bring a hint of aviary over onto your very green side over here here All right, we got the door outside here and I'm going to be just distressing it, kind of blending in some of those lines with the 220 grit sandpaper and not going to take too much off, just enough, get a little bit of white peeking through and maybe hide some of the brush strokes where we didn't get it blended quite as well as we wanted. 
So this door had a bunch of flex and speckles in the latex that was up underneath it. We didn't realize that they were gonna come through so strongly, but I kind of like it since it's uniform. Once we get the stencils on there, it might have a really cool effect and be to our advantage. got the new tarnished pearl that we're going to be using to stencil with. I actually like it for this application because it's kind of a dark white, if that makes sense, and I feel like it's really going to show up well. Zeb's going to be using the 22 stencil brush to do the botanicals down on the bottom. I'm going to be using magnolia and part of the two flower set to floor, do a floral pattern all over. And his is going to be organized, mine's going to be kind of random. So let's do this. The thing about stenciling is you're going to want to make sure that you have enough paint on your brush, but then you're going to tap it out and then you're going to almost be dry brushing. That'll help you from getting paint underneath. So the next step, we're just going to take 220, lightly distress the flowers so they kind of go with the vibe, and then we'll get it sealed. So one of the things the distressing does, especially with stencils, is it makes it look like it's always been there instead of sitting on top of the green color. Yeah, I kind of feel like it blends it a little bit, and it hides some imperfections. I'm wiping off any excess dust. DIY paint is heavily pigmented, so you will get a little color blending. If you don't get that pigment off there, when you get it wet, it's just going to smear the pigment, so you got to get it all off. So we're using DIY Big Top to seal this up. It's going to be under the porch. We will keep it outside, but it's not going to be in the sun. And unless we get like real crazy winds blowing sideways, it's not going to get wet either. You do want to be careful that you're not smearing the paint because it reactivates it a little bit. So be careful of that. Once you go over a spot, just leave it alone until you do the next coat. Light touch. Light touch, that's right. This door, we're thinking we'll do a little simple zeb. What do you think about just doing the corners up here and then maybe some flowers by the knob? Yeah, I think that'll be good. I don't think we need to make them identical or fill it all up. No. I actually really love the blue blending on this one. So you love blue more than green? I love them equally, but I just love, this I... has got a real beach vibe going. I think you're just ready for some beach time. Yeah, maybe. Too some warmer weather. Much <laughs> snow. So this one is actually a fresh egg stencil, but you know, I'm using it for the flowers on it. Let's see, I'm not gonna do the stem part, but I'm just gonna come up this way and do that and overlap it, you think? Okay. I think so. Where it goes over the other color, you gotta, kinda gotta go dark, otherwise it looks can see the stencil from where you come through. So we started out with two crusty old latex doors. They've been sitting out on the back porch, not being sold, and ta-da! <laughs> um, I think that the latex worked to our advantage because when we sealed it, it did pull up some of the base coat, which is fine for this look. If you were painting a piece of furniture though, and you wanted to paint over latex, I would consider giving it a sand because this were these ones were really really shiny. Yeah, and this isn't typical. Like this is really really old latex. It's been on these doors a long long time. 
yeah, who knows what they're covered in. The awesome thing is that there was some texture underneath, so when we distressed it, that pulled back through. The stencils, I think, added some floral fun, and now we've got some bright colors, even though we're not ready to plant, and hopefully it'll bring people into the shop. We used a lot of products today, just kind of old odds and ends of what was left, so I'll try my best to list all of them down below and have links for you. Never be afraid to have fun with paint and stencils. Make sure you're hitting up jamierayvintage.com for all your paint and products. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.